From the art of the deal to keeping it real. Keeping it real. Live from the Simply Vegas studios, it's the Power Move with John Gafford. Back again, back again, back again for another episode of the Power Move. My name is John Gafford. I am your host. Welcome to the podcast. We're happy you're here. To the left of me, as always, riding proverbial desk shotgun is <laughs> the Bulgarian mongoose, the polo assassin. What's up, everybody? Cold Amadan. Two it's weeks like in a Br- row. We're back yeah. on it. It's like a British on. shotgun. Yeah. The what? It's a British shotgun. It is British shotgun. Across the and way. I got British shoot on. And across the way, <laughs> keeping you caught up with all your Scrabble words, the Counselor Chris Connell. Counselor, how are you? Living the dream. Living the dream indeed. And today, you know what? We're going to talk about something that seems to come up a lot, a lot. It came up uh, for one of my coaching students this week. It came up at a mastermind. I was out a couple of weeks. It came up. It comes up a lot, man. And it is imposter syndrome. And if you don't know what that is, what imposter syndrome is, is when you think you're not worthy, you think you're faking it, you think you don't belong, you think you're waiting at any moment, you're going to be exposed for the fraud that you believe deep down you are. You're in the right part of the... Um Dunning Kruger curve. Yes, that's it. Oh, yeah. That's it. See, Dunning Kruger. See, I think that's a uh, drink if you're at home listening. And Chris mentioned <laughs> so the I was Dunning doing Kruger. Jiu-jitsu this morning. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. Drink again. And, uh, jiu-jitsu makes everything. <laughs> but you know, is that hot but, in here? But, but there's lots. Of, it's getting hotter by the second. It's already hot. But lots of stuff to talk about. I mean, obviously, first of all, talk, I mean, so let's hot. just talk directly about imposters. <laughs> this cat, the Republican senator oh, yeah. from New York. That announced today that he will not be serving any committees while the investigation goes on. And also, I guess it turned out that now he's up for campaign finance violations for funneling oh, money from ADB. That's shocky, though. I well, mean, good for him for sticking to it, right? Like, <laughs> God, that guy is... You, it, think that's what, a move, you think that's the move to stick it out? I so mean, if you like steal money, you should just steal more money. I mean, what else is he going to do? I mean, this guy's yeah. sticking with it. I mean, I, I mean, wouldn't. Yeah, he's pretty much, him. as he sits by himself in the chamber, he's pretty much like, you're going to have to drag me out of here by my uh, donuts. I love how one of his friends was like, yeah, he does drag. They had a picture that looked oh, just yeah, like yeah. him. He's like, no, not me. Not me. Well, like, that, well now, strong. And I guess yesterday <laughs> I saw it. I didn't read it. I just saw the headline. It was like, so his ex-boyfriend is now commenting. And I'm thinking, could there be like a better like commentary coming from like that guy's ex-boyfriend? Oh, like... Let me tell you about this guy, <laughs> whatever. I'm sure it was just, you know, scathing. that to me is such a dumb. So one of those things when people talk about what your ex thinks about you, what an irrelevant point of view, right? Oh God, dude, when I was on, it's so funny. When I was on the apprentice a million years ago, like, you know, all the news is coming and you see this stuff and, and you're reading it. Cause whatever, you have nothing else. It's just, it's, so you're this a is maniac. Before, you well, no, never this, read. The no, this is before haters. social media. So like, you're just like, all these people are talking about you. So you're reading it. And like they interviewed some girl I dated for like a hot second in Atlanta that was giving her opinion on me. And I'm like, who, who, who is this? <laughs> what? Why? Like, this is who I you don't found? think any of my exes would speak bad on me. Oh, I one time had. I don't. I really don't. I think that's almost like a cult ex challenge. If you know any cult exes um, out there, have them call in to the old power. Movie. I, I, I don't love, think they would talk I'd that love bad. To interview them. That'd be great. I one time had a girl I was dating start hanging out with my ex. And they were like, hey, we should get another one of his exes together and have like a brunch about it. That'd be fun. And like it would be fun girl thing. They called her up. It was with another friend of mine. They called her up. And she's like, are you guys out of your minds? Is it, This is a fun thing to do? It was just like, what the hell's wrong with you? Why, like, no, yeah, no thank you. How in the world is that a fun, yeah, how's that a fun thing but to it do? Took, it took a girl that they thought would have something bad to say about me to be like, are you out of your mind? No, it's still like... I, I try to be nice with everybody. I don't have any no, exes it's, that I'm see, like. No, see, this kind of thing would say, never happen. Know. It would never happen with guys. No. Never. I don't, never. I'm not going to hang out with my ex girlfriend's current boyfriend and talk shit about her. No, but yeah. well, no, he Nuts. wouldn't. Hang, he wouldn't hang out with he you. Hang out with me because he's not a psycho. Hopefully. No, no, because the problem is he would have to look at you and know <laughs> you did dirty things to his current <laughs> girlfriend. Nobody wants to see what that. What do you call that, John? What's the, the look? The look. The look. The look. <laughs> you love to. For those of you who don't know that premise, it's it's here's the premise. When you run into a guy, it has this hasn't happened to me in a gazillion years because I, I the only person I've ever dated in Las Vegas is my wife, so I haven't. I don't, this doesn't happen for me, but back in the day, 
when I was swinging single, living in places yep. where you dated a lot of people, and you run into somebody that's with somebody you used to date, you get to give him the look. You which get is, to give him the look. You get to give him the look, where you look at him and you're like, and it's always the same thing. It's something about her being a keeper. <laughs> it's a right? girl, you got <laughs> so it. So hey man, hang on to her. <laughs> no She's a keeper, and he instantly knows, like I did some weird stuff to this person. He's like, what, yeah. Yeah, but you hate to get the Horrifying, look. Horrifying, You don't yeah. want to get the look. So no, that would never happen I mean, with men. Yeah, I've never. Never, zero chance, because of that reason. Yeah. I would I'd never have. run to any of my exes in town never no, i don't have anything bad i've i've had situations where my wife and i have had dinner next to an ex of mine and just very That's polite kind of, and i never run into him I, I don't think i did anything in those ways where it'd be like oh you're you know, just a lot of stuff just doesn't work out you're not yeah. supposed to marry every person you date you're supposed yeah. to date people and find out what you like and what you don't like and let's say you circled back and it worked out for you but Right. People have this thing like I gotta stay with this person forever. I'm gonna die alone. I truly feel like, <laughs> or I have to hate them. Or I have to hate them if it didn't work out. It's like no, yeah. you you clearly liked something about them. I Most have. people have some redeemable stuff about them. You don't have to see fight because we used to. I know somebody see, no, that's. Here's, here's, a, here, but here's one thing I can say: is back when I was back when I was single. You know, like I would have these girls that were friends with all their ex-boyfriends and they would, you know, oh, they're always talking on the phone. This and, that. and I always told all of them. It's like, look, no, I hang out with you on this level. Like this is the level we're at. And if we stop hanging out at this level, you're probably never going to talk to me again. Yeah. Just because I'm a, there's a reason that this didn't work out. So yeah. I'm going to th throw you in the rearview mirror and that's going to be the end of it. Yeah. That's, that's a mature way to do it. Yeah. I, I never, it's not that I have any ill will or malice towards yeah, our time people, is over. But what's the point? Yeah, exactly. Thanks. Well, thanks for coming out. We have some it's a disrespectful thing, too, right? That's it. Yeah. Like, I think that's home, a disrespectful thing to have your exes as your friend while you I, got somebody new. I, I think that's weird, those people that are always like, oh, you know, you go to, they go into a room and they've dated half the people in the room. They're like, oh, it's my ex, Mike. We're all, fr we're all still friends. It's like, that's kind of weird for Hold me. on, but what's ex? Yeah, that, I mean, that's true. Let's just, I mean, are we going with carnal knowledge? Carnal or are we going, knowledge is that, is is that the line? Ex is like, no, you like had a relationship. You asked them to the. The, the sock hop or whatever. The, the sock hop. <laughs> it's the Sadie Hawk. The so she, you were asked the to the Sadie hop. Hawkins by them. Or the sock hop as you go along. Went you to know, the soda shoppy. <laughs> the soda shoppy. Here's another interesting thing that I saw today that I thought was kind of interesting. And I posted something. It's so funny, man. It's like I never know what's going to work on the old gram. Like I never know what's going to hit. Like I'll, I'll throw some stuff up on the gram and, I, and I'll think – you know, Grimaldi's. Man, I got a bank. No, not Grimaldi's. Oh, you know I what? love Grimaldi's. You know, real quick in the camera Grimaldi's three, Chili's, yeah. you're, you're close because fuck you, Grimaldi's, real no, quick. Let me help no, you out with that. I love yes. Grimaldi's. I no, still no, go no, there. No. Well, let me, well, let me help you out. We'll talk about Grimaldi's first of all, and we'll segue to what I was going to talk about. Yeah, sorry. Garlic pizza? No, 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 because this is what we're talking about. Look, here's the deal. When I go to any any hospitality establishment, mm -hmm. like there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an unspoken deal. I'm going to come here. You're going to provide me with a level of service and quality food, and then I'm going to give you money. As long as that's a reasonable expectation. And I think of it's completely service. reasonable yep. service, right? So we go to Grimaldi's, right? We order our food. Kids get the cheese pizza. Me and Gidge get one with like pepperonis and mushrooms on it. Sure. Whatever. Kids' pizza comes out. Twenty. And keep in mind, kids' pizza took 30 something minutes to come out. 25 minutes after kids' pizza, we still don't have adult pizza. Kids are done eating. <laughs> I'm like, what is possibly going on here? You got forgotten about. I got either the server screwed up sure. or the kitchen screwed up, right? So, but I'm pissed. I'm like, the, the girls come back over and I'm like, it's been, you know, this is 55 minute ticket time. Like you're, this is thin it's cold nuts. pizza. You're not yeah. firing right. Sicilian deep dish pizza back there. You know, I'm not Dave Portnoy, but I know how pizza's made, yeah, sure. right? So anyway, I'm like, I'm like, like I don't even, I'm like, I don't even know if I want it anymore, <laughs> right? I don't even know if I want this pizza anymore. I think I might be done with it. And, uh, and and so I tell the girl, I'm like, this is just waiting on us. I'm like, this is this is ridiculous. How bad your kitchen screwed up. I'm I'm actually super pissed about this. Sure. And I see her go back, and she talks to the MOD, obviously the manager mm -hmm. on duty. That's restaurant slang. Colt talks F -O -H. to the MOD. It's the FOH in front of the house. The, M -O -B. the F O H M O D. M -O -D. Yeah, MOD manager on duty. <laughs> she talks to him, and this cat, I can just see him. He goes just like this. He goes, he's standing the, kind of by the window. He looks out at me at the table. He looks at her and he goes. Just like that. What is that, yo? The shrug. Gave me the shrug. And I'm like, you know what? And then she brings me the bill. Full bill. No apology. No nothing. Without no. the pizza? No, 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 no. We got but, the but pizza. She brought the pizza. Like an hour later. And then, she, and then she just brought the bill. No manager table visit. No nothing. And I'm like, dude, no. No, 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 no. So 
when I post something about negatively about a business, which I very rarely do, unless you're Chili's, Salt Lake City. I ain't forgetting about you, Chili's. But if I do that, it's really because I want somebody that has taken the risk of owning that business yeah, to understand. know what's going on at their business. Oh, yeah. That's why I do it. It's I'm, not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to take a small business and grind them into the ground. No, I want the so. owner to be like, what the hell happened with this dude? Remember we had a conversation. I think it was here about a time when your kid's meal was forgotten. and The dishes came out at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. Was that a restaurant where they did it right? Yeah. 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 They always do. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember who that was? Well, no, that, that was, I think, I think, the speci it. I think the specific thing we're talking about is, I think you're talking about the Buffalo Wild Wings when they tried that experiment where they were just bringing food to the yeah. table oh, that's right. as it came out, which they did not, which the manager basically came out and threw his hands up and said, man, I'm really sorry. I have no control over this. Yeah. This is, I'm being directed from above. Please, if you're not happy, let them know that would actually help me because okay. I've been having these conversations. But that's that. an appropriate yeah. conversation. By it, was. Right. it was. Okay. Because here's the thing that people don't realize. Let's say they came over and said, okay, I'm taking this pizza off your tab. And this is a position of mine mm -hmm. now because I do believe in the implied contract. I'm going to come here. I'm going to be polite to all service staff. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tip at least 20%. Right. I'm going to sit here with my family. I'm not going to make a mess and expect you just to wait on me hand and foot. That's right. I'm going to participate in this social experiment yes. that's a restaurant in a way that's responsible as an adult. Yes. Now, if you don't take any of those cues or if you don't do a couple little things, Bring out the food, take drinks at some five to seven minutes after I get there. Food order within five minutes thereafter, 10 minutes I can handle. I'm talking about the outer limits. Yes. I want it done a minute after I sit down. Yeah, I want yeah. that done four minutes after I sit down. But yeah. the outer limits, so five minutes here, five minutes there. You get the drink order. You're welcome. You say, I'll come back and do this, but just communicate with me. Mm -hmm. Let me know that you're going to get the drink order. And then let me know when you bring the drinks that it's time to order the food. That's appropriate, right? Yep. Do you need more time? Yeah, come back in five minutes. Great. We, we're all on the same page. I'm going to sit there. I will have my order ready. I will not be a complete jerk about it. Can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do yeah. this? Right? I will consolidate when I need something. <laughs> consolidate when necessary. You do one quality check after I've eaten to see if anything's wrong. Hey, I don't have a setup. So two minutes or two bites. Two minutes or two bites. That's that's a, that's a good, that's a very good. Yeah. But give me three and four minutes. Let me know that you are alive if something was weird. Like, hey, my kid ordered this and they got a, a salmon sandwich or something yeah. disgusting, you know, right, anchovy, right, right. whatever. I don't have setups. I don't have forks. I have children, right? Yeah. So for me, it's important. As long as you hit those four simple markers. Everything's fine. And the food comes out and it's not frozen. You know, it doesn't need to be piping hot. If it's warm, it's sat under the. T it doesn't bother me that much. It do you really know where? Doesn't. Do you know where most and restaurant people don't? Restaurant people appreciate this, but a lot of them don't seem to know where most people decide how much to tip. Right off the, the beginning. No, 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 no. Mm. The decision is made normally, and what affects the tip more than any other any other point of the meal when they drop the check off is the time from when you're done to when you get the check. Yep. If it takes forever, the tip is dropping, yep. and I hate uh -huh. when they leave you sitting there over empty plates. You, you're sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, and then they run back over, and you're just like, "Can I just get the check?" And yeah. now that you want to bust my table, like, dude, leave it at this point. Just go get the Give check. Me a check. Yeah, I don't care if you bust the table. You know, there's right this restaurant, gone. Chili's. They have these Zooks machines. <laughs> Suck it, Chili's. Suck it. Go so ahead. whatever that ownership chain is, though, I love the fact that you can get your own bill mm. on those tabletop I machines. I don't like those. I. Love I it. love that too. Yeah. Yeah, get I've me been with here. people that hate it. it. I've been no, with no. people that protest it. I go, no, no, no. I don't want to be a hostage to your coming around. I got right. my food. I've eaten. Yep. Are, we're done yeah. here. Yep. Now I want to go. I'm I, ready to I pay one. I want to go. You give me Great that machine. Sounds. I'm hitting it. Rips it right to the 20%. If it was good, you notch it up a bit. My problem with them are little kids play with them. They're dirty, gross. I don't I'm a care. germaphobe. That's it. That. I wash my hands. But it's funny because you know what happened to me? We went to a nice steakhouse. There's only three of us. <laughs> I would love to know what happened. Oh, no, no. But we went. I, I lay awake in bed going, <laughs> what, what happened, happened to, to Colt? Colt? <laughs> I got a lot of stories. But this one's nothing crazy. But there's only three of us. Okay. So the person thought they could take it by oh. memory. Not oh, writing it yeah. down. I could it happened. Yep. And I sat there. And Did at you the use end, the Gorton line? Which well, I love the Gorton line. Well, I, I wanted to at the end. The Gorton line is the yeah. Gorton line's genius. When, when, when Eric goes to a restaurant, right? I've seen him do it. This is what he says. You know, when the waiter comes over and there's a handful of people and the waiter comes over to start ordering and they go, oh, and, and Eric will say every time he'll say, are you going to write this down? Yeah. And then they go, no, no, I can remember it. And he goes, okay, then I'm going to make you a deal. 
I am perfectly happy to wait a couple seconds while you go get a pen. I'm fine with that. However, if you want to do it by memory, that's cool. But if you screw it up and it comes out wrong, I don't have to tip you. Is that a deal? <laughs> that's what happened. And they always just go, uh, and they go get oh, a pen yeah. and come back. And he's like, look, I just want my stuff right. I just, mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't want to gamble on your memory. And that's what this is. Yeah. Well, there's only three of us. So if I got, I'm like, and I that's even bad. told my wife, I go, here's the deal. There's three of us, but there's going to be at least 10, 12 things ordered. So huh? it's all sorts of shit. Right. And who are you eating with? I, I could oh, take up my buddies. Was it a tapas thing or, or no, or, no. Or, my <laughs> buddies will order at steakhouse. Like or they, they just go amount. deep. They go Everybody deep. got their own antipasta. No. <laughs> I've, no, I've got two friends. They'll go and they will order at least eight things off of one side you're up to two friends now that's yeah. good good job it's making me a well it's you two you're, <laughs> you guys are my friends you're not my friend okay. no but it was funny because they came back everything was screwed up I we, we ordered bread three times we the steaks were both steaks were swapped the wrong way made yeah, it was right, just everything right. was a mess i used to take a table of up to eight with memory only yeah and but then not everybody's you Connell. yeah but if it start getting to seven eight depending on what it was Kids, stuff like that, I'd, I'd, I'd have the pen out and do it. Yeah, I just, I, I just, I, I don't think I ever used the pen waiting tables either. I, I never did because I just, I, but I probably screwed up. So I probably screwed up so many times. Yeah, it was, it was nuts. Yeah, thankfully I did. I think maybe we just had more of a simple menu. This was back at the hard rock. Yeah, cafe. just maple syrup and just, and, just this in Canada. Beaver tails and maple syrup. Beaver I mean, tails. When you got two choices. More, be like <laughs> five beaver tails, three, three maple syrup. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to walk out here and go to Ted Hortons and get you a donut, eh? That's what's going to happen. Yeah, Pretty the much. buildings were all connected to a Tim Hortons. It was a part of the zoning. <laughs> oh, Tim Hortons. I said Ted Hortons. So anyway, back to what I was trying to say before I got segued there. <laughs> anyway, was, you know, on, on, Inst on the old Instagram, like I'll think I'll have a banger. Right, like mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be, this is gonna hit. Like the dumbest stuff, I'll get twenty thousand views on, and like stuff that I think like this is gonna be great. Like I'll get, I'll, Correct, it'll, it'll crash, right? Oh, yeah. So I saw a place yesterday or today, actually this morning. Could be the algorithm, by the way. No, I mean, it, no, it's not. I, it's not. I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that I don't blame the algorithm. If, if, if it doesn't blame. hit, if it doesn't hit, it's just because the content wasn't very good and it didn't resonate. Right, that's why. So I made, I made a post today because there was a place uh, that's taking bets right now on who's going to win the presidential election. They're taking prop bets on it, okay. right? And in multiple places, you can do this. You can place prop bets online for who's going to win the election. And right now, the odds on money favorite is DeSantis to win. To win? To win. It goes DeSantis, then Biden, then Trump, then, then the rest of them are like... Com Kamala, Far, Kamala Newsom, just deep, just deep at that point. Pence, I mean, it's just the odds get pretty long. So my question was, I'm not asking you if you're a Republican or Democrat. I'm not asking you if you're, you know, who should win or who you want to win. I'm asking you if you had to place a $500 bet today, based on what's going on today, where you lay in the green. And I thought people would like have no problem commenting on that. And I think people were too chicken shit to throw because it wasn't a, like, I, again, right. I didn't phrase yeah. it as who should win, who do you want to win, whatever. It's you got 500 bucks. So, uh, you know, who this are you going to bet on? This is one of those things that it's kind of, I was actually listening to Jordan Peterson on Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that makes me now part of the shadow band alt right. <laughs> no, because be the again, I don't, I don't, I listen to people. I don't always have to agree with everything they say, but sometimes they say things I agree with. Yeah. And it's talking about, and they were just talking about the the weaponization of opinions, right? What you should have is that free. He was talking about how he didn't like how in Florida they were trying to ban critical race theory. Mm. And that was Peterson because he's an academic. He, yeah. He's like, you can't ban thoughts. Well, how do you define yeah. that? He goes, that's, yeah. a, that's and where's asinine. The and where's the line? And where's the line? So that's an asinine concept. And I, so I heard a clip and I went and looked it up. I'm like, yeah, that's a good, that's Point. a terrible idea to try to ban thoughts. And he's like, both parties are doing these things. You shouldn't have weaponized opinions or your opinions shouldn't be weaponized against you, right? If you have a legitimate disagreement, adults should be able to talk about it and, and do it. So mm. you get a guy like Peterson who's canceled by the left oh, for, completely. for very minor infraction. I don't agree with a lot of what he says. I agree with some of it. Some of it's facile. Some of it's mm. very simple, you know, basic stuff. And people just get up in arms about it because of the messenger, right? That's, a, that's an ad hominem attack mm. constantly with these people. Right, I listen to guys on the left, and I go, "Man, that's way too far. You've taken that too far because right. the conclusion's absurd." You know, play it out. Use your mind. Use mental exercises. Don't be afraid of people's ideas and thoughts. That's just crazy. So when people say, "What's your vote?" 
I don't post anything political anymore. But it wasn't a vote. It was a what you bet. No, what no, is no, your but, bet? But a bet is vote. an endorsement. But it's not. No, it's well, not. I, I, I it's could not because, because I, like one of the answers. One of the answers was one of the answers that somebody put, which I thought was probably the best one. They said, depending on if there's actual collusion in in if there's actual collusion in the voting machines, well, it'll be the Democrats. See, that, if there's not collusion, see, but that's a that's a that's an asinine, nonsensical baseless just that that kind of answer though is weaponized like it is politicized that person is marrying themselves to a concept that oh there's this rampant yeah there's probably some fraud here and there the republicans have been the only people been found guilty of committing fraud in elections and it's always republicans that are blaming because they lost that to me is like cincinnati fans blaming the refs or chiefs or 49ers fans okay can we talk about that though sour grapes and it's just like look Okay, Be an adult. You, you, Most you, adults you are operating okay, stop. within ninety five percent of the boundaries. You of didn't think the norms. officiating in that Cincinnati game was I, horrendous. I don't think it was good, but but Cincinnati had opportunities to win, and they they didn't get it done. And that last play, they was, could have gotten it done. Yeah. They didn't get it done. They made mistakes. Now I thought the refing was terrible. I didn't think the Eagles 49ers refing was good, but. When you get blown out thirty-one to seven, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. Well, so. I, you know, and here's the truth of it: with the Eagles Chiefs thing, I I think not the Eagles Chiefs thing, but uh, the, the, the Bengals, Cincinnati yeah. Chiefs thing. I think the Eagles are going to blast either one of those teams. Yeah, anyway. yeah, but but that's the point where I can look at it and I say, okay, show me evidence that there's been this widespread collusion or whatever. But, but people don't care about facts. They feel a certain way and they want to put it down, and it's social media because nobody on earth who has actually a valid opinion on something that's backed up, mind sitting in a room with another person who's equally mature and measured and having that conversation and coming to agreement. That's what we used to do. And online, it's anonymity. And that's online, when people had just, thoughts. It's where you have thoughts and you work on that together. People don't have thoughts anymore. They don't. Their thoughts, people think their thoughts are facts. <laughs> that's just right? nuts. But it's like your thoughts aren't facts. Like that's the throw movie. it out, let's talk about right. it. And well, that- let's figure out the facts. Like they're... There are facts. The problem is we're making it so things are not right. Who's there's pre- no yeah. facts because the right? people presenting the facts are now looked at. You shoot the messenger. Yep. Right. And this is literally the opposite of imposter syndrome. Right. Where people have this overinflated sense of their own understanding of how things work, and then you, right. you you pull it apart at all and be like, Hey, how many countries in the world? I don't know. How many? <laughs> how does the electoral college work? I don't know. I don't like know. you don't know any of that, but yeah. you're going to talk to me about global political issues i saw that two-thirds of two-thirds of americans under 40 did not realize there were six million deaths in the holocaust like they they, weren't even close like two-thirds couldn't even come oh yeah sure sure, sure. million that's they're like 200 billion died or they just no sense of anything you watch these guys do the questions on the street and and he always answers yes yeah it's like, when was the War of 18 Tough? She's like, I don't know, 1972. He's like, yes. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, it's, wait, hang on. Sp- speaking of, you know, we didn't talk about that because speaking of the world consistently getting dumber. So it, there's actually, it looks like it's going to be a Senate bill is going to make it across the floor to ban TikTok. And I believe, I, my, here's my belief with that. There's two things happening right now simultaneously that I think are connected and nobody's connected these dots. And I'm going to connect them here in a way that I don't think is even a conspiracy theory. I okay. think it's just common sense. Mm-hmm. All right. So first off, you've got everybody's, you know, for, for years you've had people that want to control or want to want to protect, if you will, whatever it is down on TikTok for several reasons. Number one is because yes. Number, yes. number one is because a, it is a Chinese company run by the Chinese government, the Chinese government that they have to give information over to number one. Number two, if you look at the versions self-proclaimed, they've had experts study this. If you look at the version of TikTok that is given to Chinese children, Mm -hmm. it's like spinach versus the version (laughs) that is given to American kids is like heroin. Just like like sorbitol. No, they said it's like heroin Yeah, because essentially if you were in China and you're a kid, you're limited to 40 minutes a day and you can only see educational stuff. Yep. That's what you get here. You get who can be the dumbest person imitating a Kardashian is what you get here. Right. So they are weaponizing social media to create an entire generation of idiot kids is yes. what they're trying to do. Now, I think the reason that this is happening right now is there is also a class action lawsuit filed currently against Google to break up their monopoly on digital advertising. As soon as they bought, uh, what is it, Double Ad Click a couple of years ago, they essentially have a monopoly now online. 
They do. It's probably approaching it. And there is absolutely a class action right now that's getting heard to break them up. So my thoughts and feelings are, I would guess, I mean, sure, there's probably some of our representatives who take some money for the Chinese government. You have to believe there is. But at the same time, I think a shit ton of them take it from Google. (laughs) A lot of them take money from Google. And now Google has gone all in in the last two months with Google Shorts, which essentially operates and works the exact same way. No, not Reels, Shorts, YouTube Shorts. It's just like a TikTok. It functions the same Same way as TikTok. So my guess is, Google's like, all right, all right, U.S. representative that I fund your campaign or U.S. senator that I give money to. Sure. Help me get this projected out as a threat to the United States and kicked off, and then we're standing here to pick up all of that business. So if they lose their case on their $500 billion industry. That's the least conspiratorial thing I think we've said on this show. Yeah, I, 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 I I think those two things are absolutely connected. Well, I'm, I, I think they exist. I mean, I think there's 50,000 things that have to do with, you know, commercial interest of Google that are connected to other things, you know, yeah. that's definitely one of, but I don't, it's not like probably a hundred percent overlapping. They're just like, here's the world we would like to live in. Here's the money to make sure that that happens. Yeah. And it's, I think it's on just, the list. Yeah. I think they know how bad they are watching everything we do through our phone. And then they go, oh shit, China. We're giving all this information. China, nope, we're not We're not okay. I mean, from day one, they were not okay with TikTok. Legitimately, though, China does run a state that nobody should be comfortable with if it has to do with the trade of information. Oh, for I sure. Agree. That's for sure. A, that, that is a country that is under Jing. It is not um, one that has what I would call healthy human rights records. It's not one that, that may as well not be Maoist. Make a mean iPhone, though. The Huawei? Oh, they make a mean <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> what, you mean Huawei? Did yeah. you see yeah, how many respect. people freaking jumped on my post? And these iPhones are garbage. <laughs> I, I saw that. fucking voicemails days after. And I thought, okay, maybe so it's... So convenient, it's the iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> but did you read it's everybody? Going to space, Colt. Can you give it a second? <laughs> Can you give it a second? <laughs> Sorry, space guys. And then come down to your phone. Freaking could have got telegrammed Terrible. by that time. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get on topic for the day. Now that if you're still with us, 27 minutes into the podcast today. But, you know, it's an important 27 minutes. An important 27 minutes, I believe. There's a book out there called The Imposture Cure by Dr. Jessamy Hibbard talks about imposter syndrome and breaking it down. And this has come up a couple of times lately for me and I want to talk about today. And I'll tell you the examples that it's come up with. One of which was, I'm in my coaching group the other day and I've got all my all my people that I coach for real estate and they're, in, they're on the call and it's my weekly Zoom call Monday morning. And one of the agents in, in the call was like, you know, I've just been having a lot of, a lot of people cancel and not no show me on appointments. Right. So I'm thinking, man, maybe, you know, it's like hurting my ego and my pride. And like, I don't know if like they're rejecting me and my personality, like they don't like me enough to come meet with me. Like, is it me? Like what's going on? Right. Right. And so that to me was a classic case of imposter syndrome, because this is a great agent that does, you know, 30 deals, 40 deals a year, which is more than, you know, 99% of realtors do a great agent, but was doubting herself because other people were doing this. I asked her a question and I said, let me ask you a question. How many agents are there? You know, I I didn't ask her how many. I said, assuming that there's 20,000 agents in the MLS right now, how many of those 20,000 agents are you better than? Where would you rank yourself from one to 20,000? Where are you going to drop yourself in there? And she probably ranked herself too low. She goes, I don't know, probably like 499. I said, okay. So even at 499, which I think is too low, you're telling me you're better than 19,500 of the other people, 501 of the other people doing this job. So to me, it sounds like anybody that gets on the phone with you is damn lucky that they got you instead of one of those 19,501. Mm-hmm. And flipping her thought process about that was very helpful. But also, when I go to these big events, top two and a half percent, by the way, for you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But when I go to these big events, now, my mastermind group events with people that are heavy hitters that make a bunch of money. Everybody in there, it, it comes up all the time that they're all like, I have imposter syndrome, I have imposter syndrome, I have imposter It happens all the time. So it's it's not, if you're listening to this and that's something that happens to you, it's it's not you. It's everybody has this from time to time. Well, everybody who's actually 
like actually so worth a shit having. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it, but how much of that is is a is a imposter syndrome? How much of it is just a healthy sense of self awareness? No, I think I think some of it. Here's the thing again. And one of my favorite statements that I've heard lately is Kent Clothier was addressing somebody. I don't remember what they were talking about, but they said something, and he said, "Let me ask you a question." He goes, "Is that your truth or is that the truth?" Right. And I think all of imposter syndrome is based in that one. What one thought process, that one, that one piece of the puzzle. And for a lot of people, the truth is not their truth and their truth is limiting them from success and relationships and business and everything else. So I don't know, is it healthy a little bit to doubt your, to doubt yourself? Yes. yes. If you are doubting yourself in the realms of what most people do of just complete and untruths, you're just, you told yourself a story that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Then no, I don't believe that is healthy. You think that like social media and everything's making it yes, where yes. people have worse, right? Because yes. I know people that are super smart and super successful and they're always doubting themselves. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I do, cause do, they know they don't know everything or yeah. I think everybody on social media wants to pretend that they know everything nowadays. Dude, you know, what's killing me right now? What I mean, I'll be honest to say this, you know, what kills me when I'm going through, you know, I'm scrolling through whatever social media and see the, this is how I make $50,000 a month online. Yeah. And just some 20 year old kid and you're like, yeah, really? Fuck you, pal. Like, no, but you you're like, you toys. No, but you're like, I mean, you're like, God, you know, you're like, fuck. Yeah. And you just have yeah. to remember that, no. that, you know, that's not the norm. No, no. that's not the masses. And it is a lot of it's probably not true, but that it's just, it's, it seems like there's so much of that. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, wow. And do I think there's people that are making that kind of money online? Of course there is. Of course there are, but, but at the same time, it's like people over exaggerate. People yeah. often do things where it's, uh, let me see your mortgage balance. Yeah. You know, yeah, let exactly. me see your HELOC balance. Let me see mm -hmm. what your, they say the average person, you know, I could be butchering this, but even people who make six figures still live paycheck to paycheck on average. Really? Yep. That's not good. Paycheck to paycheck on six figures. Now that means you have all this culture keeping up with the Joneses, right? Yeah. Somebody's saying, if you live in your parents' basement and have a, a Fendi purse, you know, you're doing it wrong. I don't remember who that was. It was like a Ram yeah. Ramsey or something or one yeah. of those guys. He's and right. He's right. He's hundred percent right. You should There's drive a, a Honda Civic. You should drive a Honda Civic, mm -hmm. right? You should have a, you know, you should always be ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. If you're living up to your means because you think you deserve a Mercedes or whatever, you know, you don't understand, you know, I don't know. Maybe you've just never suffered through poverty in a way that's, you know, actually or they serious. just, I don't know. They have their priorities so wrong. It's I was wrong. with a group of people. Three of them had uh, three, $400 shoes on. Mm -hmm. These guys, I may, you know, it's like, Jesus, like, I'm doing a lot better than you, and I yeah. never spend that for just tennis shoes, right? These like, are gifts. I, these oh, I, as I'm looking at Chris's shoes. No, but these are people that literally, if you said, hey, give me 500 bucks, they could not. Oh, yeah, yeah. They right. could not come up with $500, yeah. right? Then why are you out drinking with them? <laughs> no, I wasn't <laughs> drinking with them. Oh, okay. No, I wasn't show with them. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Yeah, yeah no, nice. I wasn't with them. I was not drinking with them. I, whatever. No, but, you know, but it's true, but people will go. They'll go to these nice restaurants. They'll go to the Toka Maderas. They'll go rack up all these bills. And it's like, how, don't you find that you work too damn hard to be worried about money just for the opportunity to self yeah. Just to be there. Just to be. Like, I mean, you're not there yet. Just hold on. Well, and even I think, even if I think when, once you get there, trust me, there's places where you're just like, I think yeah. you told me, would you pay thirty four dollars for an old fashioned stack? I was like, that's just oh, yeah. stupid. Yeah, no, I, 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 don't, I don't enjoy it. No, it's like there's no such. I'm me, annoyed. By there's that. no it's such thing. Like that. There's Hurt no such me, thing as a right? there's no such thing as no. a thirty four dollar old fashioned. No, no. That well, drink unless does it's happy. Yeah, but then why then are you not putting? Then why are you putting mixer in it? That's all I'm saying. That's my point. There's no such thing as a thirty four dollar old fashioned. I mean, if somebody made me an old fashioned with pappy, I would pay thirty five dollars for it. Oh, absolutely. But, but I, this was I like a year ago and it still bothers for me. For doing sure, that, but still, yeah. I'd pay that for it. That's a year ago and it still bothers me. Oh, God. I, that you pay that much for it. Like, I'm like, ah, I can't go. I'm not going to that no, restaurant. No, it's true. It's true. Right? No, like, I, don't, I don't enjoy feeling like somebody. I don't enjoy feeling like a tourist to begin with. Yeah. Hmm. Do you have that? You know, like imposters. Like, I don't, I feel like in this town, in Las it's Vegas. town, yeah. I don't go to places where I'm going to be treated like a tourist where it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's this overpriced thing because you're right. here for an experience. Right. 
right? Like, if I know if I go to a stadium, I go to the Raiders game, you're dropping 120 bucks on drinks, period. Yeah. Right? That's because, you know. 250 on bail. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's a Raiders joke, I think. Um, it was. No, but, you know, you know when you go. But if I'm just going to a restaurant, we're going to whatever. You know, the best old-fashioned in town is Lazy Dog. And it so is. It's, I can't it's, bacon, it's, so good. It's, it's not even close. So when I go to, if you go to Stack and you pay $34 right. as opposed to $15. Yeah. You know, I'm going, I'd rather have two of those. Right. You know, what are you doing for? I'm married. I'm not here to pick yeah. up women. Anyway, I totally uh, could be yeah. no, I get it there. That's And I that's think that's a, social media, right? Like, I think people are, they, everything wants every, to be perfect, photogenic. Oh, I was here, I was there. And people are going so into debt because of it. Mm -hmm. And if you have imposter syndrome because you're fronting all the time, that's, that's a, a different issue. Well, that's a pro. That that's a problem. This is yeah. this is what I'm talking about today. Yeah. Is really unjustified imposter syndrome. It's mm -hmm. basically when you are put in a situation, and a lot of people struggle with this, especially with like public speaking. Mm -hmm. When they get offered, to, when they get asked to speak somewhere, they're like, "Why would anybody want to listen to me?" That's right. And what they don't understand is you're you're already halfway over the hump just by them asking you. That's right. It means right? that there's a market. Yeah, yeah. they're they're not going to ask you if they don't firmly believe that you have something to I say to help person. people. So I had a I had a trial scheduled for yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I used I love going to court. Love it. But COVID, all the courts have been on um blue Zoom. jeans like Zoom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Blue jeans. I was going to court. I was getting nervous. I was getting very nervous and this is for nothing a low stakes situation. But it had to do with the case, and I and I set it for trial because they were trying to give me a deal, and I said, "No, I'm taking this to trial." I think COVID did that, right? It did. I remember, COVID. God, first yeah. time we came back to the office, and we weren't even out of the office that m long. But I remember it was kind of awkward. All everybody just talking again. Isn't yeah, it weird? It's when kind you, of weird. Are, it's, you know, it's so quickly how things switch because when you see somebody now with a mask out, you're like, <laughs> "Yeah, weirdo." Yeah, <laughs> like, you're like, "God, what do they have?" I saw a guy <laughs> in, the, in, the, in his own car with a mask on, still in his that, own car. That's crazy. Himself. That's. I got cut off three times the other day by somebody, and I got next one. I'm like, but yeah, no, but but my point is I get to court, you know, and I'm feeling like, hey, I, I can do this, you know, because right, right, right. everybody, I don't care who you are. They say Mike Tyson before he would get in the ring, right, would have that, you know, this man can't, you know, I, he would have to talk himself up. It, yeah. Every single fight. There's not a professional fighter well, who doesn't get in the ring that's got some kind of level of imposter syndrome at, at some point before the fight, right? You're doubting right. yourself. Well, they, this book says, it says the most common feeling you get is fear. Fear. In any situation, we walk in in fear, which triggers the fight or flight response, which causes you know the throat to close up. You get and you know you get agitated. You get that. So if you're in a situation or you are around people, if you're going to a dinner and all of a sudden you're like, oh man, I'm just I'm agitated. You have to understand what it is because once you go into that fight or flight, it really starts to, to domino and, and and the ball gets rolling downhill. It's your parasympathetic and sympathetic reflex response. Mm -hmm. What was that? Can you Google that? <laughs> I know how. Parasite. Google. Hang on. Sympathetic and parasympathetic. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> you get that That's one. That's just the one. inappropriate yeah. Google horn. You know, Scrabble <laughs> horn we're going to go with. Chris but it is. But it is. And that's, that's what it gets triggered. And it's, there's good reasons for it. You know, it's there yeah. to protect you. So. Well, again, it, it comes down to understanding if it's the truth or if it's your truth. And I think that's one of those things when, you know, a lot of this, according to this book, a lot of imposter syndrome is really based in your childhood mm -hmm. where as a kid, you just take everything at face value. So if you have kids, remember this, if you know, but if you're struggling with this, you might want to take a little revisit back to your childhood and understand how you were reassured or taught by your parents. Because if you were always told that, you know, it wasn't good enough by your parents, Probably nothing you're doing as an adult feels good enough either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably. Go back to the Robert Greene, right? Yeah, go back go back to that, which is good. Which, again, I think if you have kids and you want them to avoid this in the long run, this is why it's a really good idea to always celebrate effort and not results because effort is something that can be measured and, and you know, controlled. Right? controlled, right? You can Sometimes the effort, sometimes the results are out of your hands, but the effort is always within your grasp. Like with Joe Burrow this weekend with Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> oh, okay. It's not a sports show, I know. Not a sports show. <laughs> I didn't even watch it. Really? No. Turned on like the last two minutes, saw the guy do his stupid play. And I knew it. it. Watching him run him down, I'm like, he's going to hit my, him out. My wife yeah. threw on this really big brisket. So I'm like, oh, what do you, you guys are doing? Oh, man, I brisket. forgot about the brisket till right now. I think oh, I just wow. like the toast. Yeah, I shot I like John. I'm like, shot you guys say, I got a brisket off you watch a game. John, thumbs up. I'm like, 
Yeah. Is he coming? No, <laughs> yeah. I mean, no. <laughs> Great job for the brisket, but I'm not coming. <laughs> No, but again, back to the so chat. Da- <laughs> I respond, right? No. My daughter's birthday. Yes, I did respond. Way later. You oh, did. did. I, I you didn't did. have my phone. It's, Sorry. It's you did. But back to the, your childhood. I mean, also what causes some of this is what was successful to your family, you may have grown beyond that. And this sure. is why a lot of people get really trapped in that hamster wheel of abject poverty because mm-hmm. that's just where their comfort level is. That's what they always saw. That's why it's so hard to escape and level up to that next level. Because as a, as a kid, if you were just taught, well, this is who we are. This is what we do. Yeah. You know, you look at those people that live in the Midwest who, you know, granddad worked in the coal mine. Dad worked in the coal mine. Yep. I'm going to work at the coal mine. Same thing, you know, in Michigan. Granddad worked at Ford. Dad worked at Ford. 100%. I'm going to work at Ford. I'm going to live in a house three blocks Shack- away from my parents and marry my girl. Like, they're done before they even start. So understanding that. Your childhood or your family could have inadvertently and, and, and inexplicably and accidentally inadvertently. It's placed, so inadvertent. It, it, well, no, no, but no, because they don't even realize they're doing it. Is my point. So, but they could have absolutely, without even thinking about doing it, placed like a fence around your expectation of life without even realizing they did it. So, if you're struggling to get out to get to that next level or struggling to get out of where you're at, maybe look at how you came up right. and understand that. It's okay to be better than your parents. Sure. But it's would, okay. Wouldn't you say that imposter syndrome is kind of something that's suffered by professional salespeople, right? All these people that have suffered to, by anybody yeah, have to be present, have to people. present though as an expert in their field. I, right? I, no, I, th- I think it's, I think it's suffered by anybody. I think there, okay. There's never been a time in your life. You're when on you the assembly dated, line. Hang on a second. Let me back you up. And, and you, because there, this had to have been you, but there there's, there's, you're telling me there's never been a time in your life when you dated a girl that deep down you felt was maybe out of your league. Well, of course. That's imposter like my syndrome. My current wife. You and me both. Right. And no, I, don't, I didn't date your I'm, wife. I'm no. saying it. <laughs> no, the point what? The, but the point is, when you first got together with your wife, if you thought she was out of, her, out of your league, you suffered yeah, I think I from was. imposter syndrome. So like me, when I first got together with Gidget, like when I first got together with Gidget, like I was from Tampa where we just wore board shorts all the time. Like it was like, there was no style involved in my entire look. It was just the beach. Yeah. <laughs> that was kind of what we did. And, uh, and when I got out of here, she's like, I'm going to have to clean you up a little bit. <laughs> right. That's what she even <laughs> said it. Like I'm a little rough around the edges, but I think I got enough that I can work with. And, and you know, it was, it was, there was a lot of overcompensating when I first got with her. That's a funny thing. You mentioned that about spouse. Cause I feel like I was at an age and place in my life. Mm-hmm. Where I felt like, no, 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 this is the person I deserve to be with, with my wife. Well, see, that's where you're trying to get to, though, is that, that you deserve I, I, good I think that's where I was with my wife. I think I've dated lots of girls in the past where I thought they were too good for me, and mm-hmm. it turns out I was wrong and they weren't. Right. Yeah. But, but I think when, that's in work. With, I think in life, right? You yeah. get around people, and I mean, you can get thrown in some big rooms, and you're like, ooh, I'm out of my league. And down the line, you're like, Pfft. Yeah. yeah, I'm not out of my not, league. Yeah. This is not an impressive I might actually cadre. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I think the biggest mistake people make in that situation, just coming from, from experience there on both sides of that coin, is the one thing you cannot do if you're suffering from this. Like if you get at a table with, if you get a table with some people that are just balling, right, which, which happens to me now, luckily, all the time. There's a lot of times when I'm sitting at the table where I'm by far, by far, the least wealthy person at the table which that's the table you want to be at, right? But what you cannot do at that table, and what I probably did years and years ago when I first started getting at those tables, was I would try to flex, Mm -hmm. try to find, you know, you try to find common ground. Oh, you do that, I do that too, right? Like, and I'll never forget, like I was out with a client one time that was a billionaire, and he starts talking about like horses or something, and I start, just instinct salesman kicks in. I start talking about like Ocala, Florida, where they have these horses and how, oh Super my God. Nice. We say, and I'm like, and I stopped myself after I started doing it. I'm like, this dude <laughs> is a billionaire. Yeah. Like a billion, like we can talk about me and he'll be nice to me as a human, but I am here to facilitate a need for him. Nothing further than that. Yeah, but <laughs> don't you get to a point, this is, this is hopefully the goal, to get to the point where you realize that how much money you have is so 
irrelevant to people that want to be around yes. genuine, authentic people, yes, right? Yes, a thousand percent. Like the people I like, I don't sit there and go, oh, this person's got a ton of money. I want to know that you're decent, you're funny, you got a yeah. story to tell. Nobody cares. None of your friends well, this care is if they're truly your friend. Right. And if they do care, you fuck them anyway. Yeah. Well, let's, well, let's talk about this. I told Gidget this last night, which is pretty funny, which is our I know Mardi Gras party's coming up. And uh, I was laughing because I said, you know, there's it's such a hodgepodge of people that are going to be at this party. It, it is Good, every yeah. spectrum of everybody I know. And I told her, I said, the funniest thing is there's going to be some folks that come to this party. And just because there are, I mean, because human nature, whatever, friends of friends, people will bring friends that I maybe don't know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And they will look at some of the people at this party that look homeless. like homeless Mm -hmm. and they will be the, but what they don't realize is the people that look the brokest are the richest people in that Not room. Really, yeah. And it's definitely going to happen. And they're going to be like, Who? you know, if somebody's get, somebody, a friend of a friend of somebody is going to say, who's that? Like, why is that guy here? And he's like, oh, that dude. Yeah. Let me tell yeah. you about hundred million dollar Ken. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let me tell you about him. Yeah. And I yeah. know that's going to happen. You know, that's what made Las Vegas great was that you used to have this mixing of Everything. all these different people, ah, right? Cowboys, like you would have city. cowboys, People at uh, O'Shea's, remember when yeah. when broke people had a like broke people had a place to come to the city. Now everything pushes out to ugly, uh. ultra luxury, and it's just less fun because you know people bring different elements to things, right? Yeah, I, I mean like people from the Midwest coming to have bachelor parties here. They kind of stopped doing it because you're priced out when everything's ultra luxury yeah. all the time. Downtown, no, you still get the seeds of humanity downtown. But, but that's like my crowd. I, I like it when people, but. I like to be around competence, and this goes to to imposter syndrome, not to like mm -hmm. drag it back, but people like to be around others that are competent in what they do, right? Women, they say one of the number one things, find me the best woodworker on earth, and I guarantee he's got an attractive spouse. The best woodworker, the best whittler, the best welder, I guarantee you, is very successful and has a... Because if you're extra, Offer. if you're, I, I want to hear about this competition though. How do you figure out who the best woodworker in the world? Is? No, no, no. But but people, I mean, look at look at Deresta on I mean, um, on I mean, YouTube. I'm just gonna point this out. Geppetto was single and he made a boy. I'm just gonna point that out. I don't. Oh. And next, oh my god, I almost I almost made a joke about. Uh, there you go. Wow. Get us cancel both of you. Yeah, thanks, don't John. Get us cancel. <laughs> no, but but everybody you've ever met that's the best at what they do. I don't care if it's whatever is successful. It, it, they do well because they have confidence. Yeah. Right? And if you're ultra competent and you're confident, people want to be around you. So if you're people, go, I'm a plumber. Why well, I don't want to hang out with lawyers? It's like. Well, no, 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 no. I want to oh, be yeah. around people that are passionate and excellent at what they do, and it, it can all be translated. It doesn't sure. matter what industry you're in. Sure. Doctors don't want to just hang out with other doctors. Now, they will oftentimes because they have a lot in common, right? They see common ground in a lot of things. They can relate to each other in the conversation. But like I said, a lot of people at a party want to talk to people that do different things. Well, that, that goes along with like uh, something Roland Frazier said that I love. Or was it Roland Frazier? I don't, know if, I don't know if I'm giving this right credit. So I don't remember who said this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to Roland even though I don't know if it was him. But there's a, there's a story about him and he was coaching somebody that owned a carpet business that wanted to pivot all of a sudden. He had a carpet cleaning business. Yeah. And he wanted to pivot to do something else completely different. And then Roland said, or maybe it was Joe Polish, I don't remember who it was, but they said to him, they said, uh, let me ask you a question before you pivot. Are there any millionaires in the carpet cleaning business? The guy goes, well, sure. There's people that make a ton of money in carpet cleaning. He goes, okay, then you're not a bad carpet cleaner. You're a shitty businessman. Yeah. And you're going to be a shitty businessman in anything you anything do. do. So stay with what, you know, stay with what you're supposed <laughs> to be doing. Yeah. If you pivot to something else, you're going to suck at that too. So you yeah. might as well just stay with carpet cleaning and get better at it. That's a good point. So you might as well do it. Sucking transfers over. Yeah. Success, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, success, no end. but success also transfers, <laughs> right? True. Like people can go and have different businesses and be successful. And it's because maybe they have a little bit of imposter syndrome, but mm -hmm. they, so they look to experts in that field they're going mm -hmm. into. Right. And that's what a lot of people don't realize is just cause you're super successful. You can have a little doubt, right? Well, it, but you can't let the doubt overtake you. I mean, it's just, well, that's, like you said, that's your mental it just keeps coming of imposter yeah. syndrome. And what yeah. that is, it's all a part of cognitive dissonance, right? In psychology, Cognitive dissonance is where our brain doesn't necessarily match up with where our thoughts or whatever, you know? So there's a dissonance. And as human beings, we try to avoid dissonance. We try to that's, bridge that's the gap. That's three times you said dissonance. No, but we so. try to bridge that gap. <laughs> that's, that's a three-time scrabble word. No, but if something it doesn't line up with our self-image, if, if I walked into a place and they go, oh, Chris Connell, that guy's an asshole. Yeah. I would go, wait a minute. I thought I was being super nice. 
it's going to create me an issue. So well, I, I either go, they're the problem, or I go, I need to work on it. I need, you know. So people that are imposters have imposter syndrome. Yeah. When you're a professional and you, you're evidently good at what you do, this this girl with 30 closes, yeah. a successful lawyer, a successful doctor, going, I'm going into surgery. I've done this surgery 100 times, but do I really know what I'm doing, right? right? right. If you're gonna if you're gonna you know um, get past that, right? You're gonna close the gap on the dissonance by figuring it out or just taking it easy on yourself. Well, and there's finding two ways things. around it. Yeah. There's two ways that it shows up, and the two ways, according to the book, that it shows up is either an avoidance or overworking. Those two things. So it's like to to get over this and prove that I'm worthy, I'm gonna overdo everything I do yep. and strive for perfectionist. This is where when you see people that are quote unquote perfectionists, like man, it, like it's exhausting because everything they do, they're just over, it's overkill. They're actually suffering from imposter syndrome and they feel like their end product has gotta be perfect or you'll expose them for what they do. Right. So if you are someone that is a perfectionist, you may wanna take a look at some deeper kind of a root of this because it may just be you're suffering from a little bit of imposter syndrome and not, you know, there's no such thing as perfection. Unless you're working on the nuclear well, weapon. Uh, John, no, no. Well, <laughs> let's not let surgeons, let's just, the center yeah. there. Yeah, that's people not, working yeah. on the nuclear bomb or whatever. Yeah. But I think it's like when you have a conversation with somebody with business and they go into a 10 minute thing when it was really 30 seconds, mm -hmm. they're just trying to prove to you that How? they big are words. so knowledgeable. The, and They use a lot they, of big words. Yeah, big words that no one else understands. <laughs> big razor sharp delivery complicated though. Complicated concepts. Razor sharp. <laughs> Succinct, cogent delivery. Well, the se the second thing is avoidance. When they just like start avoiding situations where they might get exposed, they say no to dinner invitations. <laughs> they say no to eating with their boss. They say no to these, uh, you know, speaking engagements or mastermind groups because they're terrified. But the reality of it is, is that is the most worst. It, it, it is the most succinct form of self sabotage there is. If you start saying no to yeah. anything that could advance you in any op in any way of your life. I mean, you're just at, at that point, you're just shooting yourself in the foot and, and it's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. The lawyer, lawyers suffer a, a disproportionate amount of imposter syndrome because people expect a lawyer to know literally everything there is to know about this the thing called the law. Right. All right. What is the law? Well, I know all there is to know about certain very specific things. All right. Right. I mean, or I know enough can, that yeah, to I go won't commit and then malpractice. You can go into yeah. it. Right, right. <laughs> so, so our goal is to never commit malpractice, right? And to know enough that we're going to protect you on these certain things. But I'll have people call me up about family law issues. And so people that want to please others or mm -hmm. they want to have a business where they take on too many things, right? They say, I, I, we're a full service law firm. So, okay, um, I want to know about Admiralty. You tell, right, I, right, I want right. to argue about the Geneva Convention or something. You can't know all that, but people are expect lawyers to know everything there is to know about this thing and none of them do zero of them do and they all suffer imposter syndrome especially when they're starting out mm -hmm. that's when they'll start tailoring kind of what they do and you get to a level where you realize there's enough business in your niche mm -hmm. and, and i'll turn down work now that i used to take because i'll be like i don't know anything about that yeah i, do, I don't know you're so scared if you say you don't know then people will be like oh what yeah now know? i'm like don't know call this guy yeah yeah but there's a way of saying, I don't know, right? So, hey, let me check. I'll have to double check. Stuff like that, yeah. right? I was on a, a conference call with five different attorneys last week, and my, the clients were just drilling these attorneys. And they kept going, ah, let me check. I'll have to check. Uh, you know, yeah. that's an NRS. Let me check. Check. Let's check, right? And they yeah. kept saying that. I'm like, you guys, just lay out everything to them. Yeah. <laughs> And let them do their research now. Yeah. Like they don't know everything, yeah. right? I don't know it, but yeah. I can. I know how to find, find it. Like I just picture a guy getting up from the Zoom call and grabbing one of those books off the yeah. wall. <laughs> oh, I could tell the guys. One of the yeah. attorneys on the side googling all murder. This. What's yeah. what's regicide? God, can you imagine? Can you imagine practicing law when you had to buy all those books? My dad always had all oh, those yeah. books. No, no, but I did. So when I was in law school, we had to go shepherdize and we had to go do keynotes in actual law books. I would oh, look up God. books. Ugh. I didn't just live online, like not that it wasn't there, but it was, but you had to learn how to use Westlaw. So mm -hmm. this is 15 years ago. It's not, I think it's probably now. I don't know yeah, if they make kids go to live, but I could go to a law library and find you ha the, the, the on case law. Do you think, let me ask you this, cause it is so complicated. Do you think AI is going to produce a generation of lawyers that aren't as good? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to produce a generation of everybody yeah, that's not as good. Yeah, that's why kids can't play defense in basketball. Now, <laughs> like yeah. you know, whatever it is, there's so many things where, you know, 
if somebody takes it away from you, you don't have to do it anymore. Why would I specialize in it? Mm -hmm. Right? Like there's a guy who's great at making, you know, buggy whips or whatever. There's a guy who's probably a great what? buggy whip manufacturer, what? you know? Like a buggy whip? Buggy whips. <laughs> what would you use a buggy whip for anymore? For buggies, you don't. That's I what know. I'm saying. So, you don't. so it's, it's like, do you think there's a, imagine if buggy whip, you know, purveyors were very <laughs> highly compensated and someone came around with the car, you'd be like, well, shit, this is probably going to change the nature of my business. And how. <laughs> I think and AI how. is going to take over a lot of stuff. No, It'll no. take over a lot of tasks for someone like me that's not afraid to pivot. It's probably going to just, you know, like I, I was telling somebody on my, I play on a basketball team full of lawyers. And I said, well, this is uh, now 205 Washington days, generals or 205 days of vacation instead of 200, why do, right? Now what do I think yeah. at the Washington generals? <laughs> you bet against the, the I thought the generals by, were due. You just get clubbed. <laughs> <laughs> the globe trotters every weekend. Yeah, but I said to him, I mean, like, well, hopefully this will just make your business more valuable because people – don't want to interact with AI. We're still humans. All this stuff that we think is going to be I replaced. Don't think, but, but you don't know. You don't know. You don't and know. And in 20 in years cases, from now, know. they're going to have that. You won't know. Pack. You won't know. You won't know. But, but to, back, back, to, you know. back to what we were talking about. So obviously self-doubt is terrible. Obviously knowing that perfection is not real. Yeah. Again, thing is going to be there. But having a fear of failure, I think this is something that, that people really – if you have a feel of, a fear of failure in anything, there's yep. two things you can do. Number one, like whenever I have somebody that comes to work for us and we have to make a lot of calls, right? Yep. Cause a lot of real estate's done by just doing calls. Leads come in, you have to call them back. You have just outbound calls. So people have this fear, this, this unnerving fear of being told no. Right. So put a value on the negative response, right, right, like right. value the negative response. Like if every time somebody says yes or something good, good happens from a situation, put a value on that and then figure out how many times you have to fail to get that positive result and then divide the number of times you fail by the positive result and you know what it takes to, what it, how much you make in the face of failure. Yeah, totally agree. That, Valuing that, the yeah, failures. That's a go. very mature thing to do though. Yeah. But it's very you, mature. It's very well regulated. I usually, people... I just say, you know, you suck loser and they tend to just, you know, figure it out. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that comes, that comes back. Okay. Well, the biggest part of having fear of any situation is because you, you have, you self critique yourself into a place where you yeah. have fear and you have to understand anytime in your adult life, when you're getting feedback, there's external feedback and internal feedback. Right. The voice in your head is probably giving you harder feedback oh, than, yeah. any, than any, than anybody will get unless you're married. Sorry, Colt. Um, <laughs> but even when you're getting that harsh external feedback, you've got it. You can. You got two ways you can do it. You can internalize it and you can fester on it, or you can take it and turn it into fuel to get better. Mm -hmm. You can gauge what if what if this feedback is true, what is not true, and be honest with yourself and drive head first into what is true. I had I had that conversation with my daughter yesterday, mm -hmm. and it, we just sort of talking about. There's this statistic that girls suffer on average three to five times the amount of anxiety that boys do. And they start getting 13 and 14 and they start getting boobs and they start becoming, you know, they, they have to navigate these really choppy waters of they're coming into their own hormonally, they're coming yeah. in their bot. Like it's all weird. And I, I don't, do not envy any 13, 14, 15 year old girl on the planet. No. That's a rough because you're now becoming um, a potential mother. Now, whether or not our society says so, that's what your body is saying, right? So there's a biological response that, that you may now have to protect life. So you get anxiety about, you know, things that you may maybe don't even understand why mm -hmm. you're getting them, right? So I was talking to her about this. And I was like, you realize that everything that goes on, and we we're talking about girls and anxiety or whatever. I said, every single thing you think somebody else is thinking about you, they aren't. Yeah, nobody's thinking about it. And she's always like, yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm like, no, 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 no. They're really I not. I really about want it. you to understand this. They're really not. Nobody's thinking about you right now, other than me. Yeah, sorry. Unless you're being like sorry. super obnoxious yeah. and trying to prove it, right? Like, yeah. other than that, no one's thinking of you. There may be 13 seconds where someone some, talks some shit about you, and that's that's it. If that sets your Who path, oh, I'm bullied. So it's like no, gives a no. shit. And that person is working through their own problems and whatever. So. I well, was like, look, nobody's really thinking about you. People with yeah. imposter syndrome are, are sitting there worried. Everyone thinks I'm a Actually, fake. Yep. Well, Everyone no, thinks yeah. I'm this. But you I'm know, not good you enough. You know the worst thing you can think if you have imposter syndrome, and if you've this is if this has ever come out of your mouth describing any portion of success you've had in your life outside of buying a lottery ticket, you're screwing yourself up. 
if you have success, don't tell people you were lucky. Don't say, I just, oh man, I got lucky. Right place, right time. It's not luck. Like, eh. it's but, not. But it's, can you, you say got, that not got, to be got, like, no, no, hey, but you've got, I worked no, my no, no, ass no, no, off and no, took no, no. chances. You've got to own, you've got to own your input into any situation that came out favorably. Like, if you buy a lottery ticket and win, sure, that's lucky. If you go to the casino and win, sure, that's lucky. But for guys that like win the World Series of Poker that spent 20 years playing poker every day to get to build a skill set. Am I going to say they were lucky or is that a skill set? They so, say luck. Luck smells a lot like perspiration. Yeah. 1000%. But I don't mind if somebody says, Hey man, I was the right place, right time. Well, yeah. I will look at them like, Oh, this is a successful person with some humility too. Yeah. Well, but again, but and, it, and I think it's more important. Let me rephrase what I was saying. It's fine to tell people that in an act of humility or yeah, self-deprecation. That's fine. If you're telling yourself that the oh, only yeah, reason yeah, this yeah. happened is because I got lucky, you're screwing yourself up. That, I mean, that, that's more. To the if part. it happens once, I wouldn't. Here's the thing, though. There's a part of me that goes, if it happens to you once, you hit a stroke of luck. There's so many people that don't have that self-awareness that now consider themselves experts and go out and think that they can make this translate to a bunch of other industries. Yeah, but if they think they have an expert, if they think they're experts and they have a different problem than what we're talking about yeah, today. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I have a much different problem. Well, fair enough. if you want to learn more about this topic, again, this was a pretty decent book. Sure. It's called The Imposter Cure by Jessamy Hibbard, Dr. Jessamy Hibbard. So if you want to read more about this, check out that book. Uh, Colt, if they want to find you, how do they find you? Uh, Colt underscore Amadin on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Connor, don't leave me a voicemail. Don't leave me a voicemail. Call. Call 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 yeah, give me a real quick. If you need commercial real estate stuff, call Colt. Just hit him up directly. I feel like your secretary so often. <laughs> like I get, I have so many people hit me up about commercial real estate every week. Like, oh, uh, hey, who's that commercial guy on your podcast? I'm like, it's Colt. <laughs> Colt, just Colt, Colt underscore right Amadin. Yeah, Amadingroup.com. I'm just going to take that commercial you can find stuff my, and Yeah, off. you can find my cell phone super easy. Yeah. Yeah, my number is 702 Connell for Connell. God's sakes. You can text it, you can call it. Connell, C O N N E L L. <laughs> Connell. 702 Connell. So, Co Connell. And if you're watching this again on the YouTube or one of those things, give us a like, give us a subscribe. And whatever podcasting you're listening to us on, make sure you give us the maximum star if you possibly can. Every little bit helps, and we appreciate it. So we will see you guys next week. And remember, if you're going to move, you might as well move forward. See you next time, everybody. Hey, it's John Gafford. If you want to catch up more and see what we're doing, you can always go to thejohngafford.com. Well, we'll share any links that we've things we talked about on the show, as well as links to the YouTube where you can watch us live. And if you want to catch up with me on Instagram, you can always follow me at the John Gafford. I'm here. Give me a shout.